Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Michael and today we're going to discuss barcodes versus capos. What's best for you? What do you think is the best for you? And what are the advantages and disadvantages of using a capo? Well the obvious thing, without a capo, as long as you know the basic chord shapes, like you do if you've watched the other videos, you know you can just bar And you can use the whole neck whereas with a capo you put a capo on and you're restricted to that section of the neck but it's a big but when you're playing bar chords you know from the last video that to do a C in a bar chord or you just move it along there's your C there's your C, there's your C sharp, etc, etc. So what does a capo do? Well, what a capo does is this. As you know from last week's lesson, if you do like an E shape, like this, and then you slide it along and put your finger across, there's no sharp between E and F, so that's an F major. Slide it up, you've got F sharp, G. So you know all that, okay? So that means you've got the whole of the fretboard to work with. But, when you put a capo on, what happens? Now, in the, the famous story of the Eagles and um, Don Henley, I think it was. Don Henley apparently originally wrote Hotel California in E minor. But, to fit in with his singing voice, he wanted to sing it in B minor. So what's the advantage of using a capo? Well a capo saves you a problem, a big problem, because supposing you've written a song in E and then a singer comes along and says well I don't sing in that key, I sing in another key, I sing in, I don't know, G. So now you've got to transpose all of the chords into G in order for that singer to sing. E, F, G, okay, E, F, G. So we go, okay, we go E, F, G. Okay, so now we're in, we're in G, we can start to play. The advantage of the capo is this. So we're in G, right? You agree? We're in G. If you put the capo on, like this, you can go back to using your open chords to play. So although we're playing an E shape, we're actually playing a G chord. Get it? We're playing the E shape, but we're playing the, the G chord. So now we, we can just carry on playing the song as it was written. So we've got the capo acting as our index finger. And if we put these, this shape on, we've got a G. By putting the capo on, we've transposed all of the chords. So we can just play the same chord shapes that we originally had. And you're off and running, you're off to the races. So it's a quick way to adapt a guitar key for a singer who wants to sing in a different key. So someone else might come along and say, well, I want to sing it in A. So all you do, slide it up to the fifth fret. There you go. Still playing the, the original chords that you knew, the major chords. The capo is acting as our finger to bar. So that way, you don't have to rearrange the whole song. You can just rearrange the neck to suit your purposes. That's the advantage of capos. The disadvantage of capos is you're now limited to this section of the neck. But with bands like the Eagles, they played, I think there was eight guitar parts on Hotel California. Overdubbed, of course. <laughs> Don't sound terribly wrong, but don't sound terribly right either. I think he, I think I read somewhere that he had it on the seventh fret, which is nuts because that's way too sharp. Let's try it. Let's 
try to pick. That sounds way too high for me. I think that's way too high. I could be wrong, but let's try it on the second fret. Okay, well, anyway, the point is bar chords and capos each have their place. Now the capo, obviously, is great if you you want to just transpose songs into different keys very, very fast without having to think about it and having to rewrite the whole thing. So capos are great. The big debate that seems to go around is that capos are a bit of a cheat and bar chords are for the purists, the pure guitarists, right? Well, let me tell you, I don't think that at all. I think bar chords are great. I think capos are great. They each have their uses. And when you look at some of the biggest bands who ever rocked this world, all of them used capos. And they were some of the greatest guitarists in the world. So you can't tell me that using a capo is a cheat. It's a legitimate piece of equipment. So when you see a capo on a guitar, don't think, that guy can't play the guitar or whatever. Just think, well, obviously it's the, 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 the right tool for the job. Because that's what it is, it's a tool. It's the Lunatic. And it gives you that ethereal, mystical kind of sound, the 12 string. So yes, yeah, it's, it's got its place. It takes a bit of getting used to. It's, it's, um, it's quite easy to play. There is another thing about 12 strings that I've discovered since I've had this one. My son gave me this, this is my son's guitar. It's a Takamini EG345C electroacoustic because it's got a net preamp in it. This is the TP4T preamp, and it's got a little tuner in there as well. And I'll tell you what, you need it on a 12 string because 12 strings are notorious for going out of tune, especially if there's variations in the temperature. So having that little uh, tuner there, really very handy. You don't have to carry another piece of equipment around. That's a good thing about that. Now, a lot of the bands in the 70s, 1970s, a lot of the big bands like the Eagles, America, Pink Floyd, and um, you know, a lot of the, the big guitar bands use 12 strings because they have a very, very distinctive sound. The 12 strings give it a kind of drone or like a chorus effect. I've got to tune this up. And it's because of the amount of strings, the amount of tension on the neck, on the headstock. What a lot of people do is they detune it. They tune it down to D. They, so they loosen off the string so it goes down to D. And then they put a capo on to bring it back up to E. So like we've got D, we're now playing E. That's another uh, thing you can do with a 12 string. It's got a very distinctive sound. Very spooky. <laughs> e, A, D, G, B, E. Plus you've got the octave, with these thin strings, you've got an octave higher. So you get a chorus effect, like this. And no matter how many times you tune it, these top strings here, the E and the B, will always slightly go out of tune, almost immediately. Which is quite interesting, it gives you a very interesting sound.
community news, I had a comment from Jose F. Mathias, and he said, did you teach yourself to play the guitar? Obviously, yes, I did. And he says that he's actually learning to play the guitar, and he's learning English by watching my videos, which I think is fantastic. That's, I didn't even think of that. What a brilliant idea. So you learn to play the guitar, pick up the language at the same time. Excellent. It was my grandson's birthday uh, the other day. He was 15, so happy birthday, Louis. And yes, uh, we are still moving, and uh, I'm doing these videos as when I can, as and when I can, but we are moving shortly, so uh, watch this space. If I disappear for a week, then you know what's going on. If you're new to my channel and you've just dropped in and you want to learn to play the guitar, do yourself a favour and go and look at this playlist because it will take you through step by step how to play the guitar. It makes more sense for you to start at the beginning, that way you won't miss any steps and uh, you'll make faster progress than I ever did. I mean, I taught myself how to play the guitar many, many years ago and it took years. And what you can learn in a matter of weeks took me years to learn. But I've pulled that down in these lessons, so to save you some time. That's the purpose, to help you to play the guitar and to save you some time. The lessons will help you to get off to a good start and I'll see you over there.